All right, subscribers, as promised, this is a video on how to diagnose a no start issue. So right off the bat, we know that the fuel pump was having issues before where the fuel pump every once in a while you could hear it come on and then sometimes you wouldn't hear it come on. So now it does crank, it turns over real quick. Go ahead and try to crank it like a start. Yep, yep. And then you can see, you can't hear the fuel pump come on, but it'll still crank over. Right there, you, heard, you should have heard the fuel pump come on. All right, so did you hear how that, that engine revved, how it spun? That's normal. If it was slower than that, I would start looking at a bad battery issue, a bad ground issue, something like that. Also, the next thing you're gonna wanna do is, go ahead, turn the key on. Where's your LCD screen? Yeah, I was gonna show them that too. Now right here on the LCD screen, when that loads up, if we crank it and all those values go away, that means we're having an issue where either this is losing power, this is losing ground, or it's losing key on power. Go ahead and crank it. So you see, Nothing changed there. So that means our power going to our computer is good. So that's not gonna be the issue. Now what we can do next, if you wanna figure out if it's a spark issue, obviously we're gonna get air. I mean, we would assume we're getting air, but if you wanna diagnose if it's a spark issue, the next thing I would recommend, pulling off a vacuum hose, like say for example, this one that we don't need because it goes to the um, valve cover. You can spray carb cleaner in here as he cranks it. And if it fires right up, you know you have spark, you know you have air, you're just missing fuel. But we already know that the fuel pump's not coming on, so we're gonna go ahead and diagnose that. So I'm gonna have Danny here. First thing he's gonna check, we're gonna cut the system right in half. We're gonna go straight to the green wire coming off the Terminator X. That green wire should have 12 volts for five seconds when the key's on. So if you guys are checking it, you turn the key on, you grab your multimeter, you come out, you look at it, and it's been longer than five seconds, it's gonna lose the 12 volts, guys. Okay, so make sure you're, you're ready to read voltage as soon as the key is on, because it's only gonna be for five seconds. So go ahead and check that, Danny. Find your green wire on your Terminator X. That should provide 12 volts. And usually that's hooked up straight to the fuel pump. On ours, we're using the Hellcat fuel pump, so that actually powers up a relay. But we're gonna start there. If we got power going to that green wire from there, we're gonna move our way back. If we don't have power going to that green wire, we're gonna look into the harness, Terminator X, and why it doesn't have 12 volts. So go ahead and check that first. And you said this white one is uh, power? Yeah, hi right, guys. So we're here. Uh, Don Slick was trying to go live, but his um, Android was giving him issues. Go figure. The Android, bro. If he would've had an iPhone, he'd be uh, live right now on Instagram. So here's a relay right here. Out of the relay, we have a white wire. That's your positive, this is your control side. You also have the fat red one that gives power out. You have the blue one that should get power from the battery. This red one's gonna go to the fuel pump. This blue one should come 12 volts from the battery, 30 amp fuse. And then you have the black one here, this one here that is grounded right there. So first thing we do, you see we're pierced into the white wire. And we have a different ground because we want to make sure we're getting a good signal. Because if we read ground there, the same place where it's grounded, we might get a false reading. So go ahead and jump to the front, turn the key on, and we're gonna see, turn on our trusty multimeter here. You guys, have you guys seen this multimeter before? And you know, you know. All right, hold on. You turn it on, turn off the key real quick and turn it back on. I know, but it's only, you only get a voltage for five seconds, so turn it back off. Turn it on. You can hear something clicking, but I don't see voltage there. All right, so now, because it does click, we're gonna, all right, turn it back off. We're gonna, you can, if you put your finger on it, you can feel it click. Turn it on. I do feel it click but somehow I'm not reading voltage there. All right, so next thing, if we feel it click, that means it's getting power. Well, let me check my wiring real quick. Let me check this to make sure I actually pierced in and uh, then we'll go from there. All right, guys, so I readjusted my lead. So this actually is a good, good time to, to point out that 
don't always go off your first reading, especially you, you saw I heard the relay clicking, but I was reading 12 volts, so that completely didn't make sense. And then when I go here and I touch it, I feel it clicking. So I'm like, why the hell is it clicking? And I'm not reading voltage. So I went on ahead and then uh, re pierce the wire. And now I'll go ahead and turn the key on. And now you see the 12 volts, leave it on. So you can see how it goes away after five seconds. Cause this is your priming feature on your Terminator X. It'll prime the fuel pump for a couple seconds. And it should go off and it's not. There it goes, now it went off. So I think we actually changed it from five seconds to 10 seconds on this one. All right, so we know that we're getting power to the relay and we know the relay is coming on. So obviously we could assume that the black wire on the relay is gonna be good. So next up, we're gonna start diagnosing, seeing if we got power at the red one and if we got power at the blue one, which that the power at the blue one should be constant. As soon as we plug into that, we should have power there. If we don't have power at the blue one, we're gonna work our way back, look at the fuse, look at the wiring. If we do have power at the blue one, then we're gonna check the red one. If we don't have power here, we'll go from there. I just wanna get you on camera. This is the reason why we fix shit because he brings us donuts. donuts. Yeah. And then if you guys wonder why I'm so fat, it's not because I eat donuts every day. Tell him why, Diego. Cause I don't lose, bitch. I don't lose. So I can't lose weight because I never lose. All I do is win. All right, so now we just plugged in to this blue wire here. This is the one that's coming straight from the battery. It should be on a 30 amp fuse. So obviously if we don't have power there, we're gonna check the fuse. This should be constant no matter what, even with the key off, we spliced into it. And what are we reading? We are reading 11, almost 12 volts, which is battery voltage. So now we know that the wire, battery wire, battery power coming all the way from the front of the car is good. We know that the relay is working. So next, well, we know the relay is clicking internally. It could be bad, but we haven't got there yet. So we're gonna check power here. If we don't have power at the red one, that could tell us a few things. It could be the relay, it could be the wire after that, but we'll, we'll get there when we get there. So let's go ahead and check power at the red one. All right guys, so like we said, we should have 12 volts constantly here, right? At the blue wire. When should we have power at the red wire? All the time, uh, just when the key's on, we'll go with Danny for this. For when the red wire? Yeah, for the red wire. When should we have 12 volts? When you, uh, when you click it on, when you uh, turn it on the key. Yep, so this one won't have power right now, but when this really clicks on, then this will have power. So we're gonna have Danny go ahead and go to the front, turn the key on, we're gonna fill the, we're gonna hear the relay click and see if we got power. Did it click? Yeah. And I don't think we got power. Oy. Yeah, we don't have power there. So cycle the key again. I felt it click, turn it back on. It's on. And I didn't hear my multimeter, come on. So again, we're gonna make sure this is definitely uh, pierced before we jump to conclusion and say there's no power here. So I'm gonna go ahead and readjust my wire and see if that fixes it. All right, I moved the uh, wire piercer over a little bit and I re-pierced it. We'll go ahead and turn the key on. We should hear the relay click. Relay clicks. Multimeter shows no power. All right, so my next test is, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this connector off to make sure that this voltage is not being affected by this down the road. Could be like a bad fuel pump, a bad, um, a short or something like that and that will cause us to lose power here completely. It's not likely because we still have 12 volts on the blue one. Um, actually, we, we didn't check 12 volts with the key on. But regardless, we're gonna go ahead and unplug this connector to make sure everything after is affecting it and then we're gonna do the same test. Is the key off? Mm -hmm. All right, so go ahead and unplug this connector. Now I have seen this happen a few times and that issue kicked my ass, so that's what I'm gonna do right now to check it. All right, so right now we're checking 12 volts here, nothing after that's gonna affect it, the fuel pump or nothing. So we're gonna go ahead, cycle the key back on. You heard the click. I didn't hear my multimeter measure anything. Usually when uh, it reads something like voltage or something, you hear it go beep, beep, beep. 
So now what we're gonna do is if we have power going to the blue one and we have no power at the red one and we have the relay coming on because we got power at the white and we have a good ground, what could that be? I ain't heard what oh, you said. All right, so we got power at the, the control side of the relay mm -hmm. and we got a ground, so the relay is coming on. We got the blue wire that has power coming in from the battery. We have power there. The red wire that's supposed to send power to the fuel pump does not have power. So what do you think it could be? The relay. The relay. We're gonna go ahead and swap that relay out and see if that fixes it. All right guys, so I'm gonna have Danny switch up the relay and see if that fixes it. But just a tip guys, if you guys ever um, work on cars and get frustrated, a real quick tip on how not to get frustrated. It's all about mindset. If you come in here with a positive attitude, you need to get shit done. And the easiest way to have a proper mindset is how? Mindset equivalent uh, equates to donuts. And yes. If you start your day off with monsters and some donuts, trust it's going to be a good day. You know what? These guys should really sponsor me, man. What the hell? Anyways, we're going to grab some donuts. Then we're going to swap with the relay. And then we're gonna see that fix it. All right guys, so the old relay is out and the new relay is plugged in. And we're gonna see if we get power coming out of this red one. And the multimeter should tell us. And if everything's working correctly, we should hear the fuel pump kick on. So listen for the click. Go ahead. There's a click, you hear the fuel pump. We're measuring voltage there. We got power. So that was our issue guys, the fuel pump was bad. Um, always double check connections as well though, just to make sure there's no corrosion in there. Make sure while you're down here, make sure your ground wires are nice and tight. Cause even though it was our relay, it could have been some uh, bad wiring that caused our relay to go bad. Uh, but for us, I think it's just the relay. We're gonna go ahead. I'm curious to see what this looks like on the inside. So as far as um, well, we can see where it's damaged at, so I'm gonna go ahead and try to take this apart. If I can, I'll post it. If not, um, this will be the end of the video. But let me go ahead and try to take this apart real quick. Oh, you want to stay back here? Yeah, I'll stay back here. All right, so before we even say we're good, we're gonna go ahead and try to fire up the car. I just gotta turn it off. Before you mount my lead. I forgot this is laying on the exhaust. But, uh, all right, obviously it's fixed. So that was the only issue we had now for all my subscribers. I will be doing a longer video covering everything for a no-star issue. So you guys make sure if you want to subscribe, subscribe, and you'll see all the details. We're going to go over how to diagnose um, a no-star issue, whether it's spark-related or it's air-related and where it's fuel-related to cover your basics. And this will help you guys out on your no-star issues. All right, guys. So we ended up figuring out the relay was bad. That was our no-star issue. So the fuel pump wasn't coming on. Um, the relay was bad. I tried to open it up for you guys, but it's glued on there. So all you're gonna see in there is just some burnt contacts right where they touch. This would be like some carbon buildup where it wasn't making good contact. But anyways, we also had another issue with this vehicle. So we had a cylinder one that was misfiring or it wasn't firing all the time. So that temperature was would reach maybe like 100 degrees, all the other ones would be over 200 degrees. So if you guys ever have a misfire, misfire issue, I highly recommend one of these because you want the temperatures of each runner to be around 20 degrees of each other so that's how we were able to figure out this was misfired even though the car ran good when we went to dyno it over at darden's he said hey man this car's not firing correctly it's misfiring a little bit so he went ahead and measured everything and we found a cylinder one was misfiring now if you want to see how we figured out that it ended up being also a fuel, fuel issue with the number one injector if you want to see how that how we diagnosed that Check out my Instagram. I was uh, uploading videos on that all day. It's in the subscriber section, guys, because I try to help on my subscribers and show them how to diagnose stuff. But fire it up real quick, Danny, so we can see the temperature, how it now, like I said, before that one was reading like 100, everything else was over 200. So now we're gonna measure them real quick. We just had it running for a little bit, so I don't know if you can see that. Started at 160. 164. The back ones tend to run a little bit hotter just because they don't get as much airflow. But you can see how they're all running 
roughly the same temperature. See, now that at 200, which it didn't get over 200 before. So now we know for a fact that that misfire is fixed. So next up, guys, we're gonna go back to the dyno section. We're gonna go ahead and dyno this car with the new um, Doug Thornton headers that we put on a while back. And we're gonna see how much horsepower we made over the stock cast manifold. So you guys make sure to stay tuned for that. As always, follow me on Instagram. You can follow this guy on Instagram. And um, we'll keep you guys posted. Next video should be of the dyno session over at Darden's. Talk to you guys later.